as far as I'm concerned, this is the perfect scenario. We're set up for the night, the fire's going, there's water just over there. This is Rod McKenzie. Now, Rod, I've done the hard yards. I've driven 12 hours. I've picked up the Jayco from Hall's Jayco Mildura. I've brought it down the river. Please tell me we're going to find a cod tomorrow. Mate, we'll find some fish. Um, as you know with Murray Cod, nothing's ever easy, especially when you bring a camera. But uh, we're in a good spot. We've got a little bit of a rise in the river, which may or may not affect the fishing, but I'm pretty sure if we do the hard yards, mate, we'll get a couple of good fish. Now there's hundreds of fish out there. Like the thing I love about fishing, I wrote a book called The Bucket List. You can go and chase different species, then different techniques. I know that 90% of the time you chase cod. That's it. Why is that? Is it because of your first experience? Is it because of every experience? What is it? Mate, I, I, it's probably everything. I just love the fish. I mean, as I was saying to you the other day on the phone, like, uh, my second cod was 86 pound. Like from seeing a cod, the, f the biggest one I'd ever seen was 10 pound. And then to actually come up the river and troll up an 86 pound cod on a lure, it's so amazing when it comes to the top. It's hard to believe that a freshwater fish can grow that big. And we've got that right here in our rivers. So like of all the big fish in the world, freshwater fish, they are so special. I think the word is iconic, an amazing species. We're gonna get some marshmallows. We're gonna roast them. We're gonna have a great night's sleep. Tomorrow we hit the water in search of the beautiful Murray cod. Stop! Oh! Yeah, any old time, mate. <laughs> any old time. About happen. there, I reckon. That's not bad for first cast, Paul. Mate, first cast. Great start. Oh, mate. you think? Look at that. And look at that fish. And you tell me you're not a cod fisherman. First cast, and you're on. <laughs> <laughs> oh my cod! How good is that? And what a beautiful fish. Yeah. Look at him, mate. I'll try and slide him over for you. Oh. He's, he's not keen, is he? How's the power? <laughs> they go. They big go. broad tail, mate. Big broad tail. And it's all about those short bursts, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, they're just incredible. I love these things so much. Is he ready now? He's ready. Good fish, mate. Good fish. Well, Only mate. one thing I need to say. <laughs> this is Rod, the Cod, Mackenzie, and we have arrived. <laughs> that is gold. Mate, is a beauty. That is why you drive 12 hours. That is why you come with the guys who know their stuff. I just cannot believe it. Oh, bring him in, Paul. I've donned the glove. Yes. Oh, look at that. So, hand in the mouth. Yep. How's the power still? Oh, they're strong fish, mate. Just grab him with your thumb, that's it. Yep. Oh, support support him. the belly. Lift him up, look at that. That is a mighty cod. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> nice on the cast, mate. What is it about cod that floats your boat, mate? Because I know you love them. Everything, everything about them. Look, this is not a big fish, but it's just a, a, a nice looking fish. They buff these lures down, they strike really hard. Got big tail, really powerful fight. And you get to come to places like this to catch them. It is amazing, I haven't even got to enjoy the place yet because I've been too busy catching fish. <laughs> this isn't fishing, this is catching. This is the Murray Cod, one of the most iconic species in Australia. And he says, not a big fish. Well, to me, it looks pretty big where I'm sitting. <laughs> it's that's, a nice fish, mate. That's a awesome. Nice well, that is what I call a mighty fish. Someone asked me yesterday, Paul, you seriously drive 12 hours to catch a fish that you might not even catch, and then you let it go? And I said, yeah, he said, I don't get it. I said, you've never caught a Murray Cod. Because once you've caught one, once you've seen one, I'm telling you, you'll get it. And there he goes, look. Off to the depths. And that is why the Murray Cod is an Australian legend. I'll tell you another Australian legend. <laughs> right there. <laughs> Thanks, mate. So, Paul, we're fishing the Bassman spinner baits, mate. Yep. They're the four by fours, they've got four little blades, and we're in pretty deep water here, so you need to let the spinner bait sink. A lot of anglers cast it out, wind straight away, they're not making the strike zone. So you let it sink right down, I'd say it's four to five metres here. Takes a while to sink. Sometimes you get hit on the drop, you'll be just standing here and you'll feel a little flick. So you just strike straight away, you know, but once you get it down there, give the rod a flick, get the blades rotating, and just a slow, steady retrieve. So you're literally just Winding the handle, yep. no, no fancy stuff at all? No, no flicks of the rod tip. Just a slow, steady retrieve. And they can hit you anywhere from the cast, on the drop, all the way back to the boat. So they'll actually follow that lure back? Yeah, right to your feet. Sometimes that'd, I'll take it just as it's about to come out of the water. That'd be fairly exciting. It is, mate. <laughs> <laughs> The 
The key with these spinner baits and all cod fishing is to just get as close to the structure as you can. Don't be scared about losing lures, Rod, because if you're not losing lures, yeah, you're not catching, catching cod. Fish. <laughs> that's that's, right, that's right. one thing I've learnt. Yeah. Well, the lure we're using on these Murray cod today is called a Bassman Colorado 4x4. Now, that's a whole lot of lure. Looks like a clothesline with a Christmas tree hanging off it, but for some reason the cod just love these. For me, the most important part is that soft plastic and the stinger hook in the tail. That's the one that always seems to nail them. Have faith in spinnerbaits. They catch fish, they don't get snagged often. If you believe, you will receive. Well, I often ask people what it is about Murray Cod that floats their boat. When you look at the surroundings here, how could you not enjoy a day's fishing? There's always that chance of that big woof, that massive strike, the photo with a fish literally this big. But the serenity of being here, the only noises you can hear, rustling in the trees, the odd pelican, a few insects, that's one of the reasons I love cod fishing so much. say that Murray Cod and Australian natives in general are the fish of a thousand casts. What I mean by that, you put in a thousand casts, you're a chance of catching a cod. So you always got to have your wits about you and you've got to make every cast count because when you least expect it, bang, fish comes along and it changes your day. A lot of people wonder what is the best gear to use for Murray Cod and today I'm using Rod that's both versatile for trolling and casting. Shimano T-Curve, it's a TK3G, one of the newer models, I absolutely love it. This one's rated 6 to 10 kilos. The real Acidica bait caster, not one of the most expensive models but one that I love because it never lets me down and 30 pound fins braid, even the biggest cod, I reckon I'm going to stop it with this. I'm enjoying the shade, mate. It's beautiful. Isn't it? Oh, so good when that sun just hits one of the big gum trees. Tell me about Almighty Cod. Yeah, it's uh, a new DVD we've been shooting for the last couple of months. Yep. Got some uh, fantastic footage, some really good surface footage, and some very big fish. We actually wind a metre 20 in by the tail. No way. Which is something that I've, I've never seen. I've heard of it, but I've never actually done it until we got the whole thing on film. When you so. say some good surface footage, you don't mean like looking at the surface. Are you talking about catching cod yes. on surface lures? On the top. At night? Uh, in the daylight, mate. Which no is way. Which is pretty special. And big fish, you know, metre plus fish. So. Almighty cod. Almighty cod. I reckon that might be one worth checking out because that sounds pretty mighty. You serious? <laughs> at, at daytime. At daytime. That is unheard of. Uh, well, I haven't seen it, so... You'd cringe when they hit. Oh, you, you look the other way. After a couple of strikes, you tend to look the other way when it gets near the boat. You'd have so. to, because now when they hit, do you have to just let them, like you have to count to three or say, God save the queen for your strike? What do you do? Mate, it's split second stuff. It's just boof. And it, yeah, you pretty much jump out of your socks, get back in them, <laughs> and fight the fish that's hooked up, you know? No, that's why he's not wearing socks. <laughs> very, very interesting, <laughs> Mr. McKenzie. Clean out of them. Very interesting. <laughs> Well, it's been a long hot day, we just saw a bit of shade, we thought we might get a little respite from the sun. Gonna try some bait fishing for cod, you'll see there's a bardi grub and a yabby, it's the cocktail cod combo, let's see if it works. It's just to fill you in the picture, the current's running down this way, we've tied upstream of a massive snag, the idea is we cast our baits in towards the snag, and as the current drifts down, the smell goes under the snag, brings the cod out. Rod, we've been here about five minutes. You've already had two hits. Yeah, nothing nothing special, mate, but it could turn into a big fish. And you've got to put the time in, don't you? Yeah, mate. It's just like any sort of fishing. It's uh, time on the water, and, and then it's up to the fish, I suppose. I tell you what I like about this bait fishing. 
It's in the shade. <gasps> it is so good because it gets damn hot up here. Well done, mate. That was right where you said too, wasn't it? Right on the end of the stick. On the end, when I saw your cast out of the corner of my eye, it actually looked like you went nowhere near any timber. No, there's plenty of timber out there. I actually hit a bit of timber before he grabbed it. Well done. And you nominated this snag would probably hold a fish too, didn't you? Yeah, it usually does. Not a bad one, but look at the balls that are coming up back there. That's the old tail print. When the cod use that big tail and slaps. He's got a bend in that rod, mate. I think he's a nice fish. I think so too, Paul. We'll find out in a second. I always like to see him. So do I. Oh, oh yes, yeah. he's a good one. This is a big fish. Oh, he's not a monster, but he's a nice fish. He's a metery, I reckon. He's a metery. He'd be very close. If he's not a metre, there won't be much change. This is a big Murray cod. Oh, how's that? Oh, look, he spat something out too, look. Yeah, they and you're do. saying cod actually regurgitate food? They do, mate. Like, you see they eat them big freshwater mussels and stuff. Now, yep. you, you think about the alternative to regurgitation. Oh, that's <laughs> not good. <laughs> It'd be hard work, it's wouldn't it? It's not good. He's spitting stuff out there as well. Beautiful. Beautiful fish. That is just mind-blowing. That is a monstrous fish. I mean, I get to do a lot of fishing, but there's something about these cod. They just blow me away. We'll quickly get it in so we can show you. And those environments are so good for this because they don't damage the fish. You might want your glove, mate, because... I'm right too. He is a big fish. Look at that tail. And every fish's tail is so different. The cod, he's got that rounded tail on the end. And they're pretty powerful even the net, aren't they, mate? Yeah. He, he's, not, he's not a metre. But I'd say he'd be getting up 90 centimetres. 90 centimetres. So what sort of weight does a 90 centimetre cod have in this system? Uh, in this system, they're a little bit lighter. Yep. They don't seem to be in as good a condition as the, as the Murray fish. Yep. But I'd say he'd be 26 or 7 pound. And age-wise? Who knows, mate? Yeah, maybe, so, maybe 10 years, maybe 8 years. So they're quite a quite fast-growing fish. I think so. So I a fish so. this size, it will spawn a lot. How many sort of eggs would it drop? Well, I know when, once they're up around a metre, I think it's about 80,000 eggs. Yep. Which is a lot, a lot of eggs compared to smaller fish. So... With, like you said, with the new regulations that we've got now, there'll be a lot more of these big fish in the river. That's what you want. It's fairly hot today. We're going to get this big fish back in the water, but I'm loving this place. It is unbelievable. Well, what I'm going to do, Paul, is this yep. fish, he swallowed this lure right down. Yep. So I always make sure I've got a pair of wire cutters, good, good solid wire cutters. And what I can do is get that hook and cut it. Get the lure out without damaging the fish. the fish at all. I'll just drop that there because it's tangled yep. around there. And, you can, so, and then you just flick the barb out. So what kills a lot of big cod is people going down trying to get the hook out. That's exactly right, mate. Um, there's a bit of a thing with with cheese bait as as bad for being bad for cod. Yep. I think it's more the anglers that are trying to get their hooks back more so than the cheese. Getting you know? down there. Well, that's a great tip because we want to look after these fish. And what is the fatality rate? What's his chance of actually surviving? Oh, pretty good, Paul. I'd, yep. I'd say yeah, he'll survive. No worries. Um, I think it's time out of the water, it's time of everything, it's just a matter of looking after the fish, minimal out of the water time, and uh, it's usually not a problem. Well, let's let him go mate, let's let him have his time, he'll just cruise Don't off. Don't you do that. <laughs> now he'll go, look, there he goes, that's a beautiful thing, look at that. No, he just had to get his balance. Yep. Now oh, the king of the river. 